Welcome to our conversations on artificial intelligence with thought leaders in Africa. My name is Enzel Enlovu. I am the head of research at Machine Learning Africa. Our aim is to demystify artificial intelligence, ensuring that AI is not just a buzzword, but that artificial intelligence is fully understood by all the participants in the economy, its benefit and consideration. Thank you for joining us once again. We have a special guest and we're talking about uh, digital transformation in South Africa and the African continent, where we sit down together with uh, people that are doing wonderful stuff uh, within our market. And today we have again, a, an expert in the field. I would say uh, someone who's doing wonderful stuff in the field of digital transformation. And I'll ask Johan to um, introduce Ryan to us. Anzeli, thank you. This is our 11th recording. I can't believe it. Uh, we've had interesting conversations with people in our local market. And you know, it, it always makes so, me so proud when organizations who started off here in South Africa are doing well um, in our market and globally. Um, and today we've got a very special guest, Ryan Falkenberg, who's the co-founder and CEO of Clever. And um, we live in this world where as consumers, we are starting to interact more and more with digital assistants as opposed to actual humans, or at least humans in call centers, for instance, who are being supported by technology and digital assistance. So it's so nice, sir, Ryan, to have you here, and we look forward to having this conversation with you. Thank you, and thanks so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Awesome. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much again for, for joining us. Um, you, you are the, the co-founder and CEO of uh, Clever, and uh, uh, Clever you, is described as an artificial intelligence for people. Uh, organization. Uh, you you help uh, organizations to digitize. Maybe if you can tell us more about uh, what Clever does. Yeah, sure. Um, thanks. So we, we're a, a technology platform, a low-code platform that allows companies to build digital experts. So um, the problem statement we really wanted to help companies solve is, um, you know, when you deal with an expert, um, they actually can handle quite high-level logic. And, and part of the the power of an expert is the ability to know what questions to ask you, to understand your context, to be able to adjust to you, but also to be able to come up with solutions that marry to your, your context. And, and, um, and that's very difficult sometimes to, to uh, find. You know, we just, we, we, we historically have trained humans and over many years they become experts. They learn patterns. They, we teach them a very simple pattern. Uh, in training courses and then <clears throat> over time they apply it many many times and then they they start learning different patterns themselves and ultimately they we consider them an expert but being able to get more and more experts to uh, deal with with um, uh, for example customers that are around the world is quite difficult and um, and what we realized is a lot of what experts do is actually they replicate logic they they really aren't coming up with new thinking on their feet yeah. what they're getting good at is um, they, they know the rules and they can, again, follow the rules um, consistently. Yeah. And, um, and we started to say, hey, but why are we asking human brains to then replicate stuff they can't really add value to? It takes them years to learn how to become an expert, but it's actually replicating logic. Mm -hmm. um, there's something more we can ask of humans and, and liberate ourselves from all these rules, but it's not, not that simple. And so we decided to start solving that problem. We said, well, why don't we come up with a platform that allows a company to, to essentially digitize an expert's brain and, um, and then offer customers direct access to the, the experts to solve the problems they already know. Um, and that, that the space that our digital expert work really well in is in, in customer service. You know, the, just imagine when you're dealing with, with a bank or an insurer or a telco and you've got a, it's a, a, a query you, you need help with or an issue or a complaint, and boy, that, that's when you really want to talk to an expert. And, and most of the time when we go online, um, we, we're given 
knowledge bases to read and to, or we're getting these chatbots that can never help us. And we just want to speak to a human. And, um, and what we, I think, have solved is, is allowing companies to build a digital expert that actually is capable enough to, to help a person solve those problems without having to speak to a human. And, um, and that's really what, what I think is, is enabling so many of our clients to, to scale very quickly because they can now serve thousands and thousands and millions of customers um, as in a way that they w w would really dream of, of serving them uh, from an expert perspective. But now they can offer a digital expert that can handle that um, and do that seamlessly. And that's really what is exciting us is this ability to, to bring, when you talk digital intelligence, it's actually the ability in our world to offer expertise um, in a way that's meaningful to customers. Hmm. Brian, that's so interesting. I mean, just earlier this week, I had to phone a service provider, which is never a joy for any of us. And I eventually got through to a call center agent who was a fantastic person, great personality. He really tried hard, but I think he's quite new. So even though I felt, you know, I, I, this is such a great guy, really, really, really trying to help me, it frustrated the heck out of me because I wanted an answer quickly. So it's such a relevant thing that you guys are doing. I, I want to ask you maybe about some use cases or examples mm -hmm. where this kind of technology works, things that we and our, our viewers might be able to identify with. Okay, so our, again, our real area of, of specialization is in companies that are regulated, so they're quite rule-based. Um, um, so banks, insurers, telcos, um, utility companies, so let's take even uh, if you're dealing with, let's say an ESCOM as an example, and you, 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 you've you got a problem with your bill. Um, and it's quite a specific issue, and you've got a, a reason why you feel you've been overcharged. Um, you, you really typically can't solve that online because um, what will be given is, a, is, is blank stuff. You know, you'll be given forms to fill in online. You might... You are given a chatbot that tries to point you to a, a website that, that you may try and work it out for yourself and you never can. And even if you can, it doesn't solve your problem. Um, and, and, and so the digital experience of solving just a basic thing like something wrong with my bill or um, I don't know what um, uh, type of electricity um, uh, I, I should use. Should I, should I take this, this policy or that, 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 that option or this option? It depends on your situation. I need advice. And, um, you know, so what we tend to find is that what seems to be quite simple businesses, electricity, is not necessarily from my side that simple. Now you add a telco, which has got lots of mobile phones, plus data, plus insurance, plus combinations of bundles, and I've got fixed line. Uh, now suddenly it gets complicated, and, um, and, and that's when it just ratchets. So we found in those environments, customers become extremely frustrated. They, they want to scream at people because no one seems to understand their particular situation. And even if they do, they, they, they can't seem to be able to do anything about it. And so, um, you know, your point about that poor agent, I, you know, my empathy started actually on the human side is I spent time in contact centers looking at, the, at how we were coding um, these poor agents' brains to answer these questions. And we give them a very simple formula. We, we write the, the rules out in a document or a manual. We may visio flow some kind of a logic for them. And, and then we send them out. And the customers have, this, uh, have always got a, a, a far more complex reality. And, and, and these poor agents are trying to solve it. At the same time, trying to work out on the systems what to do. And they just fail and they're stressed and they, and they are always being in, in, in trouble with the quality assurance people. And that's why there's such high churn. They just can't cope. And so one of the things we started to first look at is how do we build a digital expert that can hand, allow them to handle any call without them having to know what to do? That's actually where we started is helping agents answer calls without feeling stress because they had a digital expert that knew what to, questions to ask and how to resolve quest, uh, issues real time. And what we started to find, though, is that um, we could now offer that more and more to customers. So, you know, if they went on a web, website and they said, I've got a query, um, our digital expert can pop up and uh, just like a, a chatbot or inside the web page and immediately take over the engagement and help them solve it. And what's also useful about our digital experts is they can work directly with the operating systems, the impacted operating systems. And so... 
then not only are they asking relevant questions, they will ask those systems, do you know anything about this customer? So that they can immediately adjust to that customer and not ask questions they already know, uh, but also shape the conversation to that customer's reality. And then when they have worked out solutions with the customer, they can quickly hand that automatically over to the systems for processing and say, okay, it's been done for you. So that customers don't have to, first of all, know what, how, how to solve it because their digital expert will help them. But also when they, when they come out with an answer or a solution that um, everyone's happy with, it actually gets processed for them and they don't have to worry. You know? and, uh, and I think that's for us the exciting part is this ability of our digital experts to work with the customer's world and, and contextualize to them so that they feel this is really shaping around me and it's solving my problem but also then to be able to work with the operational system world and, and say, I'm going to make sure that this is, is done, with, done for you. Yeah. Um, and we do that either directly or we work with what's called RPA digital workers that then do that for us. Um, and so it's been quite interesting working in this world of digital workforces where a lot of the, the rule-based work, the, the questioning in, in the, in, with the customer, but also the doing on the systems can now be done by these digital workers, our digital experts with digital RPA workers. Um, and, and the result is suddenly, if, let's go back to our agent. Our agent isn't being asked to um, explain why the bill uh, is X or, and, or, or Y because the, the, our digital experts and workers can solve that. What they are now being asked are, are higher level questions. They are looking, they are going to be contacted by customers for meaningful conversations where their skill is actually about customer experience, empathy, listening, resolving it, really solving the high impact conversations, not the transactional or just get it done uh, conversations. And so we ho are hoping that by taking away all that grudge work, that replication work from, from contact center agents, we can free them up to actually have really meaningful high impact conversations that that actually aren't about stress for them but is actually about value and and that means getting the best out of humans yeah. and giving them meaningful work and actually uh, making sure though that on the replication work that digital workers get uh, get to do they get to do it accurately um and they actually resolve issues for customers and that's a, for us a win-win is that customers now can actually get stuff done they can get stuff done digitally without having to speak to people or a human but when they want a meaningful relational engagement with the customer, I mean, with the company, that's done by human. Um, it's not done by a, a digital expert or worker. It's done by human because the, that's a relationship issue. Um, and we feel that's, in a way, the future of work is, is humans are going to bring a massive value in terms of relational uh, engagement. But also their brains are going to be applied to thinking about new ideas, creative creativity, innovation. They're going to be, their energies are going to be about the, the new thinking of where this business can go, changing the rules, adjusting to the future, whereas the digital uh, experts and workers are, are going to be about the replication of the given, the, the known, what's already been worked out. They will then just make sure that gets done accurately and efficiently. Um, and, and we are excited to be part of the, of, of the future shaping of organizations and also the future shaping of human work because I look at my, my daughter's and they're still going to schools, learning how to, you know, to largely replicate. Um, and I want to make sure that when they get a job, they get they are asked not to do what here's my policies and procedures. I would like you to replicate for me and, and follow my rules, but actually say the reason I'm hiring you is because I need you to help us reimagine, rethink, adjust to the future. I'm hiring you for your brain, for what you can bring to our business, for the ideas you can bring to our business, not. For your brain that you can just replicate what we've already done and i so i'm passionate about it because i want i want that work life for my children um and i want that work life for more contact center agents and for more of our um our communities in south africa right that, that's that's quite interesting what, what you do there you know I, I was wondering actually if the the people are ready to to let go of these mundane tasks that can actually be automated you you actually work with uh, different uh, organizations across uh, the financial services industry, the telcos, like you were mentioning. Um, you know, I, I wanted to find out in terms of uh, the the readiness of the the South African uh, market and, and the African continent. Uh, 
you know, in general, in terms of uh, digital transformation, would we'll, we'll you say that um, South Africa is ready for digital transformation? That's an interesting one. Um, there's a fear factor. Because mm. when you move from your as is change management is all about um, enabling people to move to a, a, a future and be willing to leave the past. And, um, and I, there is a fear because of the reality of our economy that I'm going to lose my job. And actually, there's, that's, that's a hell of a scary because I'm seeing it around and, and it's all happening and it's real. Mm. Um, and so we need to solve that problem is, is how do we, how do we offer new roles and new opportunities and not just implode old roles and, 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 and not have a replacement. So I think part of the, the importance in Africa is that we have to be able to offer uh, viable alternatives, um, and not just remove jobs for efficiency sake and, and have no alternative for people, because that from a, uh, a community perspective um, and a country perspective is massively problematic. Mm -hmm. um, but that said, I, I've always been amazed at, at the African um, uh, capability. There, people from Africa, and you, you see it internationally, have a number of things uh, that I've experienced uh, living here my whole life that, that stand out. The first is they generally have an amazing EQ. They have a warmth. They have a sense of humor. Um, they are incredibly good socially, um, and, and they're also innovative and resilient. And these are interesting. They don't have to go to school for this. This is just part of our, our makeup. Um, we, we are naturally like this. So in the contact center industries, um, the reason why many, many companies choose South Africa is uh, not just because of price. It's actually because the neutral accents but the warmth, the human capability of people, young people in South Africa are standout and people like dealing with them. Um, and they uh, are, are really exceptional at uh, customer service and engagements. Um, and, and, and so for me, those are future skills or capabilities that we want to leverage is if we could, if we could offer uh, our, our people more problems to solve and less solutions to implement, um, what might change in, our, in the way we think is that we actually see that we are problem solvers naturally. Yeah. Um, we just need to be, be trusted to do that. Um, most of our jobs are to implement solutions. And, um, and actually, uh, you know, we may not be as good as implementing solutions as other countries that are very good at training you to be rule bound, um, a, a, a robot with flesh. You know, There's, there are many countries that, that, you know, that train you from a very young age to follow the rules. And, um, and I, think, uh, I think, in effect, our African uh, our nation and, and our continent, if we could give them a very quick way to enable themselves to start solving problems, we would see a, a, a release of energy and creativity and innovation that I think would surprise us. But we're very paternalistic. We, we, we want to give you a job. We want to tell you what to do. Mm. And, um, and, and then we want to uh, performance manage you for doing that job. And that's, for me, the old school. That's, that's gone. We should, that's facing backwards. Let's get digital workers to do that. And then let's trust our teams and our, and our people to come up with magic. And I, if I was a betting person, I would bet on... Uh, on African capabilities to come up with brilliance um, and and actually stop getting so stressed about schools. Schools they are old, are, are backward facing. They they've actually failed us. Um, and in fact, we can probably have people who have very poor schoolings that can succeed way more than those who have had very good schooling simply because of their life skills, their ability to be multicultural, multilingual, um, their personalities. I think I think they've got it in them naturally. And I, I personally would back this African continent to, to accelerate rather than to be crushed by the digital uh, transformation that's coming our way. Mm. Brian, whenever I speak with you or I listen to you, you know, when you do your talks, it's always an inspiring thing. It's, I like your, your ethos, your philosophy. Uh, it's about, because it's, even though you're a tech company, it's about people primarily. And, you know, when, whenever I travel, and I'm sure a lot of us can agree with that, is you, you pick up people from Africa, especially people from South Africa. We loud, we laugh. Um, 
if you sit on a tube in London, you know who are South Africans, you know. So, but Ryan, there's there's so much more to speak about. I, I know you guys are expanding globally. I mean, there's that great uh, partnership with um, Blue Prism from a ro robotic process automation point of view, and I think you're working across other platforms as well. But it was it was really just lovely to host you for this short talk, and and it's inspiring to listen about this view of the future. I see in Africa and, and we wish you all the very best as you go and conquer the world with this very needed technology and this very needed approach. So very, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute pleasure.